following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians. Uh, my pleasure to be here following uh, Steve Rhodes and John Logan. And it's just a very interesting session that we're seeing right at this particular moment. Have a look at this. The Dow is down 356 at 17,323. The S&P is down 32 at 2,024. The VIX index is at 18.04, at up 252. That's 60, up 16%. What is really interesting about this is that the E-mini is down 36 at 2017. And look at the pattern that, that is unfolded. This is with... DuPont, United Technology, which was just doing fantastically the other day and gets slammed today on, on a bad earnings report or at least a bad outlook. Caterpillar, you got all these Dow stocks. Um, and this is so fascinating because at this particular point, because the day is young, but what you've got is that that trend line, that pink trend line right there, what I call chap wave inside track. Usually you find it in a channel. It doesn't have to be a channel, but it's an inside track. That is the two parallel lines that either contain the upside reversal points or the downside reversal to the upside points. When it went right to the line, it did not take out yesterday's low of 1997. Today's low so far is 2013. And the uh, let's just take this 120 minute chart away and what's fascinating about this is that if I was to say to you <clears throat> this is the month of January and so far with the Greek news and the the Dow news and everything going on that is being perceived very negatively the market has not broken down and as I say, the day is young. We're down 350 in th points in the Dow, 32 points in the S&P. We could see an acceleration to the downside still. I'm just saying right at this particular moment. One of the reasons I said in my, in my newsletter this morning is that we're looking at a particular VIX instrument. That is the VIX uh, um, volatility index. And we look at one of the uh, ETNs that uh, trades basically off of the VIX index. And I said, we're putting it on the list, but we're not having a position. And one of the reasons is that if it opened up quite sharply, and then the market started to heal over a period of a couple of hours, that could, in fact, be the low for this particular day and maybe for the next two days or so. If you're looking at the daily chart we've made a peak a we've held the arch formation yes the, the 120 minute chart broke down quite badly it broke the 200 period moving average support at 2031 it's got all the way down to 2013 and it's only six points off that low but if the stochastic starts to turn then that would become a magnet 2031 a lot of ifs over here but even more important let's run the numbers look if i go to the dow ind and i'm not really talking trying to talk anything into <laughs> anything believe me i i have a, i have a lot of respect for a down market um what i do have respect for also is when chart patterns maintain a certain integrity so now look at this here's the dow monthly um testing the lows but it hasn't broken the uh, nine period exponential moving average around about 17,211 that's number one the low so far today and this is going to be even more important is 17,288 well what is 17,288 is 20 points higher in each sequence from the 17,262 low that was made on the uh, 6th of January and the 17,243 low that was made on the 16th yep on the 16th of January and look at the sequence 
of one, two, three, four, five, boom, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, boom, seven. So we've got a certain sequence of these to the downside. And then if I look at our portfolio, I call it a portfolio, our positions in, the, in my opening call, so far, um, they've not been, I don't believe, that uh, certain the, the the few remaining longs that we have have been stopped out. We did add a short position. Uh, let me just double check. Uh, and I don't want to speak out of turn. Let me see. Uh, is that one of the one of ours? Uh, give me one second here because that was I mentioned it, so I may as well just follow up. Uh, yes, that was taken out for a little bit of a uh, a profit. Nevertheless, no. Was it a profit? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In at 33.78. No, we took a loss. Uh, at 29. Mm, 50. 50 cents. Less than 50 cents. Just over one and a quarter percent. Um, okay. But that's an important stock. So we're going to be still watching that. Um, others are, are still holding up okay. And in the meantime, what we're looking at here, and I'm going to, believe me, um, when it comes to intra-market activity, um, I always have to mention and make it very clear that in this particular instance, we're not even two hours into the day's session. So at this point, so far, that low is held in the Dow, and we'll see if it can continue to hold. Um, the VIX index, then we go to the VIX index since I discussed it. And th there is a chance that we could be seeing a trend change here um, because you've got the VIX index running to 17.93. It's hitting the nine period exponential moving average. So we're going to watch that real closely because certainly by the end of the day, if it gets into the 18s or 19s, that's going to suggest, hey, don't be a wise guy. This is a very serious market. It's struggling to maintain uh, its upward trend. That's number one. Number two is if the VIX starts to drop and goes back under 17, that would be a market positive. All right, let's go to the IWM. IWM is um, at this particular point holding very nicely, holding the nine period moving average, down only 0.88, whereas the Dow's down 0.2%, and the S&P's down 1.57. So this is leg B probably peak B today in the IWM. The QQQ series with Apple coming out this afternoon um, is down sharply. It's down at minus 2.56. Had a very nice move to the upside, gave a chunk of it back. But in the weekly chart, it's still holding okay. I, all I can say is it's holding okay. And we're going to go to the S&P, SPX.X, and we're going to go to our callers, holding that, that um, uh what do we call it? That falling X trend line support is down 31. It really needs by tomorrow at the latest to get to 2037. 12 points is like a wow, it's like 150 uh, Dow points, 130 Dow points. I don't know if it can do that. Um, I, I, and the weekly chart is holding support. That's all I can say there. Now we're going to go to gold at GC. Gold itself right now is uh, up 13 at 12.93. One of the reasons why I wanted to keep our position in, in gold and maybe even add to it. Uh, I was going to do that today. I'm not sure that I typed it in. Did I type it in today? I typed it in yesterday. But no, today we've just still got the one position. And that's holding very nicely. Um, Peak B with this particular count having made that lower low on the 2nd of January. So um, holding very nicely. Gold is holding very, very well. Um, and we've got to go to silver. Silver is up 13 cents at 18.11. Platinum's up 15 at 12.67. High grade copper. Man, I tell you, I tell you. High grade copper is looking just terrible. The monthly chart looks poor. The weekly chart looks poor. No, the monthly chart looks horrible. The weekly chart looks poor. And the daily chart is retesting the lows uh, in that H pattern. You're going to watch that real closely. Um, we've got bonds. Now, look at this. Bonds screamed uh, um, early this morning. They haven't taken out for leg D above the 151 and 1030 seconds. But the TLT, let's see if that did it. Yep, the TLT is in leg E to the upside, uh, e, leg E in the weekly and leg D in the monthly, uh, you've got the dollar. Now, this is going to be really interesting. The dollar is plummeting, uh, plummeting on the day. Um, not if you're looking at it 
in the coolness of a weekly chart because it's at peak D, probably peak D this week, and uh, just scream to the upside. Says there's a good chance that the dollar at 93.78, if the euro, EURUSD, if the euro is in fact making a nice V-shaped bottom at trough G, um, the euro should try to test 1.1459 and the dollar should index should test the 91s if it continues like that. And now we're going to go to Mark in Fort Collins. Mark, how are you? Hey, how are you surviving the snow? Uh, we, the snow is still coming down pretty heavily. Um, uh, a very sharp wind. And my steep hill, which is usually one of the first ones to be done because it goes all the way down to the high school, um, what, what just dropped um, is in fact they keep plowing it but nothing's happened uh, they haven't got it down to the uh, down to the uh, asphalt yet and uh, this should keep going for a little while longer and it, because the snow drifts um, it's it's in some places it's two or three feet some places about uh, eight inches so yeah we got it and how we are you doing of, out there we know a lot about that in Colorado and but the, it's interesting. Today we have 70, 70 degrees and sunny, so what do you know? <laughs> Isn't that interesting? So we took it, huh? <laughs> One for the team. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, oh, you already kind of went over this, but I thought it was interesting. If you looked at, like, the IWM in a vacuum, you would never know we were having this kind of bad of a day in the overall market. Um, yeah, yeah. That is so part of this uh, that I've been talking about for a while. It's part yeah. of the rotation. That's why um, I, I wanted to check to see how the, how, uh, the portfolio is doing, only because um, it was important for certain stocks to at least convince me that they are still showing some kind of internal strength, and I'll show one right now. Um, Alco, we do not own Alco. We did for just a brief moment last week. Um, it is holding very well, and this is a heavy-duty cyclical in the daily chart. The weekly chart is just okay, and the monthly chart is holding well, but it is a peak D, and it's, it's really struggling to get towards the 1801 200-period moving average. It's at 15.85, down 24 cents today. And this, and, and this is the rotation that we've been looking at, and if you're looking at Apple, sharply down today, the weekly chart is still holding okay, but there again, there's a D. So in a number of charts that I'm looking at in the overall spectrum of monthly charts, what is the breakout that we just saw in UTX about three days ago in leg C was an alternate count. In, I can call it alternate counts everywhere. Um, no, I can't. No, I can't. It really is a peak C in the weekly and the monthly chart is a G slash A. And I've I've been doing this long enough to to say that it is really, really unusual to go to all-time highs in different indices and different stocks and have the weekly charts fail at what, under every Chapman Wave methodology, looks like it is only a peak C. So if you don't mind, can you hold on? Because I want to look at some of the IWM stocks. Yeah, and I have a bigger overall question for you. Okay, want. great. We'll be back with Mark at Fort Collins, Basil Chapman, downtown 357, SMB's down 31. We'll be right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. 
While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Check out the new look of Tiger TV. Now you can see all hosts, charts, and computer screens live in high definition. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rose, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Think or Swim, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV. Now, crystal clear in high definition, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't seen the new look of Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. I'm running through quickly some of the uh, some of the stocks in the IWM, which is the Russell 2000 iShares. It's a real mix. I mean, you've got Brunswick Core uh, in, into kind of sports equipment and and and, and that area. You've got uh, uh, Isis Pharmaceuticals, obviously one of the great biotech companies. Puma Biotech. These are at the top. You've also got Teneco. Uh, what is that? Oil, uh, Teneco, I think, is uh, uh, plastics, oil products like that. You've got, um, uh, it's just a real mix. LaSalle Hotel Properties. Oh, I remember this one, LH. Oh, gosh, I, I used to like it a long time ago and then got out of it. Look at that move from the 30s to up to the um, 42 area. Yeah, so this is a real mixed, uh, a very, very mixed uh, portfolio. But if I do look at the IWM just briefly, it is holding while well, it is holding the nine period moving average, both in the, in the uh, daily, which is at 117.72. That's uh, about 80 cents higher. Uh, we're at 118.31 right now, uh, 50 cents high, and then the nine period moving average is 117.58 in the weekly chart. So, so far it's holding, and the mo monthly chart says it's made a peak C with a really good chance you've got the Chapman wave leg, body, and you should have the neck breaking out above 121.41. So, this is a very mixed picture, and I've been, I've been mentioning for a while, I don't want to sound Pollyannish, I don't want to sound like uh, I'm just convinced that 
this is a bull market. I'm saying it's a very select market, and there's a rotation going on. And under all all the conditions that usually, I'm not talking about over a year. I'm talking about not over 10 years. I'm talking about 20 and 30 years. Invariably, markets do not end and have a major, major sell-off when they're in weekly charts that are incomplete at all-time highs. And that's kind of been my thesis, trying to find the stocks that are participating and doing well against that backdrop. Not that easy. Okay, now let's get to your question. So I've, I kind of vividly remember, and I need to find it, um, one of the charts that you put out, I think it was over the weekend, maybe last weekend or the weekend before, where I think you had a couple scenarios where you were calling for the Dow to either hit a high, I think sometime this week, or maybe a low on February 4th, based on how you drew it out. And I'm wondering if you're still looking at that, what you drew out that day. And do you remember oh, it? Yeah, let me do this. Let me show you something. Um, the, there was a chart that I also showed one of those weekends, <clears throat> and it was of a stock. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to find it. I don't even think I can remember it right now. I'll have to go back and check all my notes. But basically, I've kept the uh, – oh, I hope I kept it. Did I? Oh, don't tell me I got rid of that. Oh, yeah, here it is. I believe that's it. Yes, here we go. So this is not the chart of that particular stock because it was a particular formation that we were looking at. I'll have to, I'll have to look it up as well. But basically what I said, and I'm showing the chart right now of the Dow – and the different scenarios, and this was back, I usually, I forget to do that, but I usually talk about a date. So let me see which date this would be. Um, thanks for bringing it up because, yeah, this is, uh, how am I going to find it? Okay, I think it's this chart right here. Let me open it up. Yes. Okay. So that was right round about, round about, on the 27th. So that was, in fact, was, what are we now? We're yeah. on the uh, 27th. They can't be the 27th. Today's the 27th. Uh, you, did, you put it out about, God, what day, what day was it? Let's see. I can't remember. I, I've got the chart right here. So That's it says it. 127, which is today. So I'm not sure what I'm, what I'm thinking here. 127. Huh, that is interesting. All right, well, this is the chart, and it shows that on the 28th, if we continue higher, we could go to a higher high above 18,103. That's number one. But if we kept going lower, we could, by the 4th of February, go down to the 17,069 level. So now, if I can only find that chart, um, is this the chart right here? Nope, this is not the chart. Got a lot of charts. Um, so, that, well, basically what we're looking at is this chart right here. And I, I believe, I believe that that was the bar that we were looking at. And that was the bar from the uh, fifth. It doesn't make sense. Well, whatever it is. What I'm looking at here is that this is the scenario that took us to the 28th. And this is the scenario here that takes us to the fourth. Of um, and the fourth will be right there. The fourth at 2093. Okay, I think I've got it. Uh, we've got a break coming up. I think I've got it organized exactly the way that I, I, I discussed it. I'll be right back with Mark. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. 
how would you feel if you had a powerful decision-making tool that has the ability to find high probability trading opportunities across multiple time frames in equities currencies and futures search no more take advantage of the best trade with the taz profile scanner trade with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to help them make the best and most accurate decisions scan over a thousand equities currencies and futures instruments for high probability trading setups utilizing the taz architecture as seen on bluebird terminals worldwide the taz profile scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on and now you can too for a limited time for tfns subscribers only we've reduced the price to just 97 dollars. that's over 75 percent off subscribers will also gain access to the december 9th workshop with john logan there's no obligation to pay anything get your 30-day free trial to the taz profile scanner today by signing up at tfnn.com Darrow Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex box spreads. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. We're back in the Dow Jones 343, but the S&P's improved a lot. It's only down 28 now. Wow. This is a tough market. And we're on with market forecasts. Mark, I went through a whole bunch of charts. I couldn't find it. It's there. It's one of those that's tucked away, and I couldn't find it. But basically, what I wanted to do is to show um, how important this green trend line, if anyone's looking at the charts right now, this green trend line, which we held this morning, how important it's going to be. And we've got Apple reporting this afternoon. We've got, what was it? What did I see there? I think Dave uh, was kind enough to put in what we're looking at. Uh, we've got after the belt Amgen. So we've got uh, the, almost like the final ones of the, um, of the biotechs. And the biotech has held very well. Amgen's just kind of stuck here. So I can't find that chart, but basically it was saying by the, by the 4th of February, we should be under or testing 17,000. And if I was correct about the last week of January, around about the 28th, 29th, 30th, towards the end of this week, we should be getting towards the 18,103 level. How are we going to find um, 800 points between now and even if it's the first week of February on the upside is going to be really tough. I just don't know how we're going to do it. So um, I'm going to have to do quite a lot of work to see. You know, I was expecting as soon as that by one penny, as soon as we got, went above the 18,103 level that was the previous high, then the weekly chart was ready to fall, even if the S&P and the others weren't. I was going to base it on the Dow, and that at that point, we could see a double-digit decline. 
as I'm looking at it right now, when you've already got uh, so many of these stocks, like a, a, a UTX, which was acting superbly, and then suddenly got smacked, how that 115.20 level, the nine period moving average is held, is going to be so important over the coming few days. When I go to DuPont, another big Dow stock, that doesn't look very good at all. It's already made its peak D. But I, I'm... I, as I say, I don't want to be Pollyannish. All I'm looking for before, we were almost within 200 points of making that uh, level. And now, of course, it's far more difficult. But you can see that at this particular point, the market has actually held very well. The VIX index, now I should be able to find it for the uh, VXN. VXN, VXN for the, um, for the NASDAQ is rallying. But it isn't soaring or anything like that, but it is rallying. So these are all the factors that I have no choice but to take into consideration. And, and if the dollar, which was at some point considered to be a, a, a market positive only in that the, the market and the, the dollar were going in the same direction, is in fact hinting that we have a problem here because the dollar is going to come down, then perhaps these um, uh, heavy-duty uh, Dow stocks would be helped as a perception that over the coming weeks, if the dollar falls, they will be helped rather than being hurt, which is very obvious in this particular instance as they are being hurt. So uh, those are the parameters. But your, when we talk about the IWM, the fact that you brought it up, even now, look, it's now it's only down 80 cents. So that this rotational correction is continuing. And gosh, that's, I mean, that's all I can say. If, if the IWM breaks under 117, uh, I think then we're looking at a slightly different picture. But right now it's at 117, it's 118.50. So what are you looking yeah. at in terms of the IWM? Do you have a position at all? Um, yeah, I took a position um, <clears throat> right around the 116 area. And, and I guess what I did it on is it looks like if you go back to October October 13th of 2014, where you have the low. A 103.54, yep. And you go up to November 24th of 2014, where you have a high of 118.78. Right. So, and I'm just kind of using a little bit of Tom's method here. Uh, you got nuts on 87 million shares. And you come back down, oh, the week of... Uh, the 5th of December. And the yeah. 12th of December. Yeah, and then you you go break through that that high from November on volume. Three hundred and three million, right? Yeah, that's a typical typically an ABC up, and if you draw out the ABC up, you're looking at a number in the 128 area as your top. Yeah, it, it, well, it's an ABC up, but it's not a straight line because it did right. pull back one more time and a little bit too deeply. If it didn't pull back below the nine period moving average, I would say, hey, I'm, I'm with you that one to one. At this particular point, all I'd be looking for is a cup formation, the third cup formation. And this is so funny. You might recall now, you remember I spoke about this as an inverted um, handle and cup formation. And the handle in the cup formation has a tendency to form another handle which goes above the previous high, but not by much. And it almost looks like an inverted head and shoulders, which you would think is very positive. But in fact, what happens is once it makes its next move up, which would mean a move above 121. Point 41 in the IWM weekly chart, that would take you to D. And then the market, again, that market becomes vulnerable. And that would coincide if it's next week. That would coincide with leg D in the monthly chart. Then you would have weekly, monthly Ds. You'd have a Chapman Wave uh, um, stock leg formation making the next slightly above the 121.41 uh, uh, high. And you'd get this pattern that I call handle, cup, handle. Uh, let me just draw it in over here, uh, which is a positive... Uh, action until it makes the new recovery high then you got to be careful because it becomes tremendous uh, three or quadruple top resistance but then it comes back and how it handles the handle on the how it handles the handle on the down move is going to be very important but yeah and and this is what I'm seeing in some stocks and I'm seeing it even in the volatility index that it hasn't as yet been able to really break out and say hey we are starting a concerted move down 
and we're going to stay that way. So all I can do is I'll probably, uh, tonight if everything works out, I don't know if you have any uh, electro electrical uh, failures here, I'm going to be doing quite a bit of work on, um, uh, on a chunk of um, indexes that, for instance, I haven't, done, ever, haven't spoken about this for quite a while, the XMI. The XMI is a uh, a basket of American Express, Boeing, CVS, uh, CVS Pharmaceutical, no, uh, um, CVX is uh, Chevron, uh, DuPont, Disney. So it's a real mix, Dow Chemical, Hewlett Packard, IBM, J&J. &J. So how that acts is going to be very important. And it's only made a peak C at all time high and pull back, but it's not looking all that good. So it's a different kind of a mix. So that's what I'll be doing tonight. Um, but in the meantime, that IWM uh, is holding well. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's really very, hey, and congratulations for getting uh, going along, and you're up two points in this particular market. That is envious. That's very good. Yeah. Okay, well, appreciate your help, and uh, sorry for the long call there, but uh, thanks for No, doing it that. allowed me to go through different scenarios. So thank you very much for calling, and we're going to be watching this really closely because this is a bit of a tell as well on the market. So, uh, folks, we're looking at IWM. We've done quite a bit of work on it and other things. So thank you, Mark, and uh, hopefully we're not going to be copying Colorado and start a whole winter here of uh, snow like this every other week. Thank you. All right. So, folks, let's do this because it's really important. As I said, I don't want to be Pollyannish. I don't want to be looking up when I should be looking down. I want to be looking down when I should be looking up. I want to be realistic. And if you're looking at very important stocks, if you're looking at the um, IBB, which is having a very good session today, it's only down 76 at 327.24, um, that is showing internal strength. And it looked as if we would get a peak C1, C2 uh, double top here, maybe even a fraction higher. But at this particular point, it's saying, hey, in the rotational aspect of this particular correction, which has been going on for some time, it's a sideways action. But sideways actions usually involve, and this is what I've been talking about for a while, some form of distribution. But at the same time, it has to be also connected to some kind of buying. Otherwise, you would not get it. It would just go straight down or straight up. So you're having a, 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 the, the, the scales of justice worked, working its magic here with the left side and the right side of selling and buying. And we're going to be watching this closely because the unbalanced volume did turn down yesterday. Stochastic still at 92% in the daily IBB, which is the NASDAQ iShares uh, Biotechnology ETF. We've made a peak E. Maybe it's a leg E and it can go a little higher but the MACD is getting a little stretched and the um, hunt, the weekly chart is right at that dashed line, um, repellent line. Uh, can it break out? We'll see. It broke out for just a fraction back on the 28th, week of the 28th of February of last year <clears throat> at 275.40. It's now at 327. Um, and is challenging that line. And the weekly chart, uh, stochastics is 93% and the MACD is still acting well. And we're going to see where this finishes on the day. Because if it suddenly turns down later in the day, finally you're going to be saying, at least in the shorter term, there could be a pullback to the 321, 318 area in the IBB. But if it breaks to a new high, this is a relentless buying that keeps coming in. Every time there's market weakness, fund managers say, hey, I keep getting rewarded for buying the IBB. Why should I change that now? And that's the way it's been. So um, well, let me do one other thing here. Any thoughts? Yeah. Uh, any sh thoughts on Berkshire Hathaway? Always great questions from Peaky in the Den. Yeah, Berkshire. Did I do this or not? Berkshire Hathaway has also a very long-term channel that has been a resistance, a trend line that was once resistance back in 2007, in December at 101. Pulls back to 44, so it's a brand new move in 2009. Goes peak A, B, C, D, E in the monthly. Has a left side, right side price breakout. Bam, exactly to the month exactly. Right there. Um, on the 28th, week, uh, week of the 28th of February of 2013, spikes above the previous high of 101.18, continues high to peak D, makes the chaff wave leg, body, neck, and this neck has just continued. It did pull back just a tad, but in fact, what it did is it continued to uh, peak E, F, and G slash C. So 
this has just been an absolute winner. Berkshire Hathaway and I have always said my admiration is not for just for Buffett choosing uh, stocks. He chooses companies. These Berkshire Hathaway isn't just a, 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 a fund of stocks. It is a fund of businesses that are being run. The, the bottom line is that they make money or they lose money, and that's represented by the price of Berkshire Hathaway. And right now, it is off the all-time high of uh, 152.94. This is the B shares. 152.94, and it's trading at 147.70. Not such a big deal. And the weekly chart has this rectangle formation right there. Rectangle formation going towards the lower part. Does it close this week under the 9 EMA? And I said in a way that this is a tell. It made that peak one uh, peak D at 152.94. Hasn't been able to break above it. It went to 151, uh, 52.74, 20 cents lower. Then it went to 152.67, and and then it broke down. But it broke down in a rectangle formation, so it's making a high level consolidation. So I'm going to be watching this as well. Let's go to Brent and Martinez. Brent, how are you? I'm doing very well, Basil. How are you today? I'm well, thank you. Um, I'm interested in this. You wanted to look at USX, right? Yeah, yeah, US Steel. And uh, my guess is that you have just taken a position in US Steel. <laughs> You're a mind reader, Basil. Well, I'm not really. I, I know your style, and you tend to get these lows very well, and that gives you great risk reward, and you, you took the jab at it, right? I did. I bought the uh, July uh, 22 calls on it. Oh, July 22 calls. Now we're going to have a different issue altogether. If you had gone along the stock, I would have said to you, using a trading stop, it's a very nice entry. 20.13 uh, was the low yesterday. 20.81 is the low today. It looks very good on the 120-minute chart just in terms of what the general market is doing because it's up 1.17, up 25 cents. You see, I've been talking about this as that rotation into the heavy cyclicals, which seems to be taking place. And as a result, uh, it's one of the, it's really one of the only reasons why I've kind of stuck with my thesis that uh, there was enough energy in the Dow just to squeak to that new high, and then we'll see. But um, we'll see how uh, U.S. Steel is able to um, control its destiny because it needs very much to break into that gap down low. Uh, the gap down high is 22.16. And the previous day, it was at 22.72. So how it can get into the gap and then it needs, if it's going to show the kind of internal strength that we need right now to be able to change the downward momentum uh, on this very short-term trend, then uh, market trend, then 22.91 is really the level to pierce. And that is one and uh, a third points higher. So let me do this. And the reason why I stalled as soon as you said you've got the call, because you're either going to be looking fantastic or you will know very quickly that the, the, um, the way that it acted, I, I'm not sure quite what allowed U.S. Steel to have that beautiful rally from 2013, the low of about, um, in April, a low of about 1580, all the way to that high of 45, uh, 4655, in fact, back in September. And then it went to the 200 period moving average, couldn't close above it in the monthly, and then plummeted lower than the, than the support level. So that makes me a little cautious, and I'll talk about that as soon as we get back. Uh, Dow's down 340, S&P's down 26. Oh, good improvement. I'll be right back. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary perspective 
Prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. And before we go to the options hour, great show coming up off the, off the mind. <clears throat> Let's finish looking at U.S. Steel because if the two candles that performed yesterday and today are a sign that the rising stochastic and the rising MACD are really telling us about the um, the heavy duty cyclicals like Alcoa, like US US Steel. Uh, let's see how's General Electric holding right here. General Electric, I can't find it. Oh, there it is. Oh, it's holding up uh, fairly decently, considering that it's dollar related and uh, um, money. Uh, that is financials related. So this is what I'm looking at. So Brent, all I can say is that you are in it and uh, as in a call position that really goes out quite a while. My biggest concern is if I'm correct, that um, it depends if, if there's a rotational correction going on now, it's saying that there's a chance we don't have to go down quite as deeply as I thought before when everything was uh, on a firing on all cylinders going to De into December, um, and that the rotation correction could have uh, done a lot of um, uh, damage 
but rotationally so that the market itself has held up quite well in this trading band and that U.S. Steel, in fact, would be the beneficiary when we come out of this and it won't go down very deeply. In fact, it'll have a fabulous rally in March. But if it starts sooner, that's going to be a market positive. And all I can say to you is that you're in the core position. I would, I'd be a little reluctant myself to be holding the core position if it takes out 20. I don't know if you have a stop on the stock or the stock on the option, uh, stop on the option. But if it starts to trade under 20, that monthly chart is really going to look very poor and certainly the weekly chart will be very poor. So this is exactly the next three to five sessions. This is so important because if US Steel is able to rally and get to 27, 22.70s by, um, say Tuesday of next week without breaking the low of yesterday, it's telling me a lot of very good information. So then I, I'd, be, I'd be very happy because you could get out of your call at any position, any time. It doesn't matter. You don't have to hold it to the you know, middle of summer. But what I'm looking at right now is what would say that it's going to break down so that you get a much better position on the call? And my suggestion is watch that 20 support. That's very important. That makes sense, Basil. The, the one thing I'm looking at out there is kind of two competing issues fundamentally. The iron ore prices have come down, but on the other side, their biggest expense is energy costs. To, to Correct. Their facilities which which are all coming down. Yep. Uh, Brent, they, yep. they, uh, they are coming down, but I don't know how it's reflected. Because I looked at AK Steel the other day, and I thought, gee, in a flat, a flat price movement like this, that'll be positive if it can pop up. Well, today, AK Steel popped up to 4.27. So it, it, kind of a different, uh, and Reliance Steel, I think, was the other one I looked at over the weekend. Yep, same thing. Flat, it's a nice trading session today, but no real strength. Yeah, so just watch it. I think the price is, price is, the, is the arbiter of the trend. And watch, watch the 19s. Preferably, you want to see up in the high 21s, and that'll be a very positive uh, action and reaction to the market in uh, U.S. Steel. Thank Absolutely. you so much for calling. I hope that helps you. It does. Yeah, maybe take a quick look at Nucor. Uh, they had their earnings. Thanks Is that NUE? Uh, NUE? Yep. Nucor. It's the same thing, same pattern. Um, all right. Yeah, I'm going to put them all on my list. I'm going to be following them. But uh, at this particular point, I think you got the one that's acting the very best, and that's U.S. Steel. So thanks for calling, Brent. I appreciate it always. So, folks, uh, as we're about you. to wrap thank up, let me – thank you. As we're about to wrap up, and I hope the storm's wrapping up. Boy, that's a lot of snow. Um, let me go through the numbers. The Dow, in fact, is now one of the weaker of the indices. The IWM is one of the stronger of the indices. Just watch this real closely. A really bad close today. You take out 17,200 over the next two days. That's really not good. But if you have a rebound today and you only close out 17,380 or higher, that'll be positive. Watch the VIX as well. VIX climbing, not good. VIX falling, good. I'll be back tomorrow. Have a great day. I'll be back with Tom later today. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This is TFNN.